Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ksenia Artamonova and I represent the Nazarbayev Intellectual School of Chemistry and Biology in Karagan, the city. Today we will be talking about the formative assessment of students' speaking skills at the English lessons on mind sports. Um, I will use this topic uh, of mind sports as an example, but generally we will be talking about uh, the formative assessment of speaking in general. And today we will talk about the specific character of uh, the formative assessment of students' speaking skills. We will also talk about some issues that arise out of this specific character. And I will try to suggest ways to solve these issues. Uh, formative assessment is not a new concept and all NIS teachers have been using it for quite a long time and have more or less adapted to it. And I think there is a general understanding that formative assessment is the process of seeking and interpreting evidence for use by learners and their teachers to decide where the learners are in their learning, where they need to go and how best to get there. This definition was suggested by Assessment Reform Group in 2002. Uh, I think it's important to mention what exactly makes assessment formative. Uh, here are uh, a list of criteria suggested by Black and William. Uh, the criteria that make assessment formative are the use of rich and challenging tasks, the quality of classroom discourse, uh, the quality and use of feedback, the sharing of learning criteria with pupils, and the use of self-assessment and peer assessment. These criteria apply to all um, language skills, uh, and I think it will be interesting to talk about what makes the formative assessment of speaking uh, special. First of all, I think uh, the special feature of speaking is that it is difficult to quantify and con consequently uh, assessment of speaking is always subjective uh, because uh, the criteria may be set but there is always the examiner or the teacher who interprets them in their own way and makes the assessment subjective. Another important factor that makes formative assessment of speaking special is the interference of other factors. For example, we are assessing um, a student's speaking, but a student is afraid of speaking in public, and this fear of public speaking can prevent them from uh, performing as well as they could have done if they were not so scared. Uh, another, factor, another factor that can interfere with students speaking is their knowledge of grammar and vocabulary. Uh, let us imagine that our objective is, uh, for example, to be able to explain and justify a point of view. And uh, very often a student can do it or a student can ask and respond to questions. But uh, very often they cannot demonstrate a level of uh, grammar and vocabulary appropriate to their age and level. And the third factor that makes the formative assessment of speaking special is the interrelation of different learning objectives. For example, uh, in grade 12 there is a learning objective to modify language uh, and navigate talk and uh, also a student has to be able to paraphrase, uh, but very often students have to do it uh, in trying to achieve other objectives. So this is how learning objectives may interrelate. Uh, consequently, based on these considerations, the aim of this online seminar is to share the experience of our school uh, in the formative assessment of student speaking skills with our colleagues. And the, resu uh, the result that we expect is that the participants will be able to plan and conduct lessons aimed at developing student speaking skills and use formative assessment more effectively. I would like to emphasize that we're not trying to uh, tell you the only truth or to teach something, we just want to try uh, to help you to do it more effectively to improve in certain areas of uh, the assessment of speaking. And here is the list of uh, solutions that we would like to suggest to solve the issues that uh, we have uh, discussed before. I will just list them first and then focus on each in detail. So the first solution that we suggest is to start the process of planning with learning objectives. Uh, next, uh, we suggest to scaffold the achievement of learning objectives. Then, uh, we believe that it's important to discuss learning objectives and strategies to achieve them with our students. The next point is to group learning objectives and the last one is to provide instructive feedback. 
So let us begin with the first solution, which is to start the process of planning with burning objectives. And uh, first of all, let us look at the picture suggested here. This is a very useful template of a lesson plan, which helps to see our lesson or our unit as a whole. We begin with the big picture. The big picture is, um, for example, the unit. In this online seminar, we will be talking about the mind sports unit. So the big picture is that students will be talking about uh, mind sports. The next uh, box is for the objectives, which we will borrow from the course plan. Uh, the star is for the ways to engage students. Uh, and the next box is very important. This is called stickability and this is what we want students to remember and be able to do after the lesson or after the unit. Uh, the next uh, box is for assessment for learning and this is what we will be focusing on. Uh, here we, we should try to write down uh, how we are going to assess our students, what we want them to be able to do and what the criteria are. The next uh, box is very important. Here it says words, but what we mean is um, ways to scaffold the achievement of these objectives. Uh, these can be words, this can be grammar, and in addition to language, students may need other scaffolding. Um, then differ differentiation, which is quite obvious, and only then do we proceed to the stages of a lesson or specific lessons in a unit. Another very useful technique that we use in planning our lessons is this golden triangle, which helps to perceive the process of planning as a cycle. Uh, of course, it begins with learning objectives and then proceeds to formative assessment and only then to activities, but still there is a cycle. After we have planned our activities, we may return to learning objectives and consider the whole process again. So we have agreed that um, the process of planning should be started with the learning objectives and to deal with learning objectives I would like to suggest these uh, three techniques. The first one is to identify the keywords, the next one is to visualize the end product and the last one is to develop an activity. And we will begin with uh, identifying the keywords. Uh, in grade 12 there are seven speaking objectives and I would like to discuss each of them in detail. So in the first one, uh, the key words are formal and informal language registers. So we want uh, students to be able to use these uh, language registers and distinguish between them. In the second uh, speaking objective for grade 12, the key words are to ask and respond to questions. Well, this is quite uh, obvious, I think. In the third objective, the key words are to explain and justify a point of view. In number four, uh, the key words are to evaluate and comment on the, view the views of others. Number five, the key words are to make a hypothesis and evaluate alternative proposals. In number six, the key words are to navigate, talk and modify language. And in number seven, the key words are to use appropriate subject-specific vocabulary and syntax. So we have gone through the first step of uh, planning. We have uh, identified the keywords. And now I would like to help you visualize the end product. I will show you a video of uh, a couple of minutes of my lesson where students are doing what we want to do uh, in this unit. I'm the first speaker of uh, group first. and. Uh, uh, we think that mind sports are uh, more suitable for NAS students and develop their um, thinking skills. So, first of all, uh, mind sports, uh, as I uh, have said, they develop our thinking skills because uh, we uh, think about our moves uh, and predict uh, our opponents. Uh, opponents uh, moves uh, and so uh, it predicts our um, uh, concentration because we think about uh, our moves and uh, the moves of our um, uh, opponents and uh, so uh, while we're thinking about it we um, 
don't uh, view others next to us, and so uh, it is um, it is a feeling that we um, uh, we are alone, and uh, it is important to us to uh, win. Thank you very much. Hello, and I want to continue our debate. Our position is my the sport uh, less suitable for an MS student at the computer games. And uh, we think that um, uh, computer games, it, uh, we have the stereotype that computer games is unhealthy, but we have the, some arguments that can prove that computer games are important in our life. And the uh, uh, first argument of first group was that um, it is develop our skills and how can it improve this. Uh, we cannot show this. Um, and the second, uh, you said that uh, concentration and moving, uh, but I cannot see that uh, if uh, somebody uh, can um, destroy my mind, I can lose my concentration. Uh, and uh, our first argument is computer games uh, have strong uh, connection with communication. In a, a computer game we have the window, uh, then when we can talk with uh, other play, players, uh, these players can be from other country or other religions, and therefore we can uh, have uh, developing ability of developing uh, mentality, language, and it can give uh, to us huge uh, education. Second argument is, yeah, thank you very much. Question: uh, How can it improve? How can my sports uh, improve our uh, skills? Like concentration. I think that Albina has said very good argument that it uh, improves our concentration and it is very useful for our NES students especially because we need a, a concentration when we while we uh, do a summative or formative assessment. And then uh, Asima has, has said that communication with uh, or communication and computer games are connected, but I, we think that uh, computer games are virtual life, our communication is real life. And then our arguments. First is reduce stress. My games, uh, my sports reduce stress because uh, when people uh, play these games, they forget about their problems and uh, concentrate in this game. And it can reduce our stress uh, and uh, help us to forget our problems. Then it improves sleep because uh, your brain need a sleep after this difficult game, and you both uh, can sleep which very easily. Yes. So we we'll take your point of view. Uh, firstly, all games, all um, excuse me, my yeah, my sport games, they are suitable in a computer games version uh, because we can play chess about in computer games and so on. That's why all your arguments is support our position because it, uh, it can be kind of computer games. And then it develop logic, analogy, strategy, community, recreational uh, um, abilities and developing on um, a, lot, a lot of media works, we think so. And that actually is suitable for NIS students because everyone has devices, firstly. Secondly, uh, we use it in the um, and we have a free Wi-Fi, that's why it's suitable for our, exactly our students. And then it develops not only your um, advantages of my game, it's uh, develop community, as said. We can talk, we can develop our language because we talk with international students. That's why we think that uh, computer games is more suitable for NIS students. Thank you very much. Я подожди, я же не могу, я не могу. Нет, да, я не могу. 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 Я не могу.
не смогу это видео вставить, мне нужно поменьше You talked about that we can play, for example, chess on our PCs, computers, yes? But it is not real thing. It is 2, 2D world, but we need 3D because it makes our visualization more better. So we need our visualization for NA students, it's really helpful. Because we always work, in, for example, in biology or physics with not real atoms, neutrons, that we cannot see, but we can visualize them. So it means that playing in PS, chess or another games, it is not useful for us. And they thought about devices, that there are a lot of devices, but in our school we have a rule that we cannot use our mobile phones. Mobile phones mm -hmm. is the most used technology in our school. And for example, we thought about Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, but this Wi-Fi is always working really slow, so that's the best thing. And now I want to talk about the best sides of computer games. Computer games, firstly, makes uh, us and uh, makes people obesity. It was by, by Harvard University report. And then, uh, for example, nowadays there is a lot of violence, uh, erotic in the computer games. So that makes me, I think, the, mostly the teenagers more angry, more bad. So that's really the best side of the computer games. But, uh, okay, that's... Thank you very much. But we uh, can, uh, it's our topic, not uh, didn't uh, spoke, uh, spoke about we should uh, get, uh, play a game on um, lessons or at home. We can at home play these games. And uh, I, uh, I want to say that uh, it is uh, comfortable to us uh, to play uh, on uh, computer games at home. Uh, okay, my first argument uh, is uh, for you. Uh, uh, when we uh, play face to face, uh, persons uh, have phobia to or shy uh, or open and uh, lose concentration uh, to play uh, better. Second, uh, <laughs> second uh, 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 I want to say that uh, okay. Sec uh, second, uh, every uh, each person can uh, uh, play traditional. Uh, games because uh, 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 scientists uh, said that a uh, person should uh, have uh, some ability to, to play chess or some uh, other uh, games. Well, what, have you, what you have just seen is a debate round. It's not the whole round, of course, it's just um, a little episode uh, and this is the activity that I would like to suggest uh, and I believe that uh, all the objectives of all the speaking objectives in grade 12 can be achieved with the help of uh, this activity but let's go back to the planning process so um, this uh, this is sort of uh, visualization of the end result that's what we want our students to be doing as a result of uh, learning the unit and achieving the objectives we want them to be able to debate. Uh, so, according to a popular definition, debate is a formal contest of argumentation between two teams or individuals. There are many formats of debate um, which are used in formal debating, in competitions, tournaments and so on. But not all of them are easy to use in class and I would like uh, to suggest for you uh, an adapted ver version of debate which can be used in class and it is called chain debate. If you look at the diagram you will see that uh, there are only six speakers in two teams but uh, generally there can be as many speakers as there are students in class so this is uh, one of the advantages of this format for classroom use. So students are divided into two teams and each is given a position, affirmative or negative, um, regarding a proposed uh, resolution. So in the debate round that you have just seen, uh, the resolution was like this. 
mind sports are more suitable for NS students than computer games. Uh, so throughout the unit we've been talking about mind sports and in the end, uh, in the debate round, we compared them to uh, computer games. Going back to the diagram of chain debate, uh, there are two teams, uh, the affirmative team and the negative team. Consequently, one team believed that uh, computer games are better and the other team believed that mind sports are better. Uh, the teams are called the government and the opposition and the game is started by the first speaker of the government. Um, you can give as much time as you think appropriate but normally we give uh, one or two minutes to a student uh, in a group of 12 students uh, which is quite enough for each student to uh, present their position and demonstrate their speaking skills. So after the first speaker of the government, the first speaker of the opposition speaks. Then the word goes to the second speaker of the government and from him or her to the second speaker of the opposition and the same process follows with the third, the fourth uh, and the other speakers. Uh, the intriguing question here is how can this activity help us achieve the seven speaking objectives in grade 12? Let us consider in each objective in detail. So the first one is to be uh, able to use formal and informal language registers. In the debate round, uh, students have a perfect opportunity to speak using uh, formal language. And we suggest the following criteria. A student should be able to use appropriate uh, polite formulas. For example, they should um, address the audience, they should address the judge, or they should begin and end their speech appro appropriately using formulas like let me introduce uh, my colleagues or let me proceed to the next argument. That's what we want them to use. The next criterion is uh, that the student uses a range of academic vocabulary and avoids slang. Uh, we believe that if a student can do this, then uh, he or she can use formal language, the formal language register. And another important criterion is that a student avoids contractions. So if a student um, can do all this uh, while debating, we believe that the student can use formal and informal uh, language registers, mostly focusing on the formal one, of course. The next objective is for a student to be able to ask and respond uh, to questions using appropriate syntax and vocabulary. Uh, debate rounds uh, often contain um, cross-examination, which can be used during or after the debate. And uh, the criteria that we suggest for these objectives are that a student asks and answers to at least two complex questions. Like the questions shouldn't be uh, as simple as what do you think? Uh, they should be higher order open-ended questions. And the second criterion is that a student uses a range of low frequency vocabulary and complex syntactic structures. This is important because, uh, again, the questions shouldn't be just like what do you think? They should. Uh, uh, they should give an opportunity for the students to demonstrate a range of uh, language that they know and can use. If we proceed to the next objective, it is to explain and justify own and others point of view on a range of familiar and unfamiliar topics. Uh, of course, this objective is uh, the one that is connected to debating to the greatest uh, extent. Uh, because in a debate round, students mostly explain and justify their points of view. Uh, and the success criteria may be as follows. For example, a student provides at least two arguments with appropriate reasoning and examples. And again, a student uses a range of low frequency vocabulary and complex syntactic structures. Uh, we believe that if a student can uh, provide two arguments and use appropriate uh, complicated enough language, then uh, we may agree that he or she can explain and justify a point of view. Um, the next objective is to evaluate and comment on the view th views of others. And this objective can also be achieved uh, in a debate round. Uh, 
Uh, in a debate round, there is always a rebuttal. For example, uh, the opposite team has um, suggested an argument, and we have to refute or negate it somehow. And then uh, the first team who suggested the argument will have to do the rebuttal. They will have to reconstruct the argument. And here is when students have to evaluate and comment on the views of others. They will have to um, say things like, our opponents may be right, but we think, uh, or the argument uh, of our opponents is inconsistent because, and this is how students will evaluate and comment on the views of others. Uh, and the success criteria that we suggest are um, the following. Uh, a student clearly relates his speech to the arguments of the opposing team, so there should be uh, like um, stylistic devices that demonstrate that the student is talking not uh, abstractly, but uh, that they are talking about the arguments of the other team. And the next criterion is that a student uses appropriate opinion markers and low frequency evaluative vocabulary. Uh, like not only things like in my opinion, but also more complicated language items. And let us proceed to the objective number five, which is to interact with peers to make hypotheses and evaluate alternative proposals. A very important uh, stage of a debate round is the preparation. Before students start the debating itself, they need to be given time to work in their teams and formulate their arguments. And this is exactly where they will have an opportunity to make hypotheses and evaluate uh, the hypothesis suggested by others. Um, the criteria are like this. A student suggests at least two hypotheses with appropriate support. Uh, so it shouldn't be just a sentence. It should be uh, a sentence with explanation, with some logical chain behind it. And also, a student should be able to respond to at least one hypothesis of another member of their group. And the student should be able to use a range of low-frequency vocabulary and uh, syntactic structures. Now, objective, uh, learning objective number five is to navigate, talk and modify language through paraphrase and correction. Uh, we believe that um, this skill can be demonstrated at any stage of debate in the debate itself, in the preparation, and in the cross-examination stages. Um, the success criteria are as follows. A student should be able to respond to criticism and questions in most of the cases. So they will be criticizing each other, they will be asking questions, and the questions will be uh, provoking, they will be trying to prove that their position is better, and they will use questions for this. So, to demonstrate that a student can navigate, talk and modify their language, they should be able to respond to these questions and criticism. And also, a student should be able to clarify their ideas by paraphrasing them if necessary. Uh, because sometimes, when you speak, uh, you may notice that the audience don't uh, fully understand you, and you have to clarify your ideas and say the same thing in another way. So this is how a student will be able to demonstrate that they can navigate talk. The next objective, number seven, is to use appropriate subject-specific vocabulary and syntax. Uh, this objective can be achieved and assessed at any stage of a debate round again. Uh, the criteria that we suggest are that a student appropriately uses three or five items of low-frequency vocabulary on the topic. So this depends on the topic. Uh, and the student demonstrates correct pronunciation, including word stress, of these vocabulary items. Because uh, when students speak, they very often have problems with pronunciation, and uh, by using this criterion, we would like to draw the attention to this. Um, so we have uh, outlined uh, the, the structure of a debate round and how it may be used to achieve the speaking objectives in grade 12. And before we proceed to the next solution, let me um, briefly repeat uh, that in a debate round there are two teams, uh, an affirmative and a negative team. They are given a resolution, which is uh, basically a topic that they are going to discuss. And this topic uh, usually has two sides. In the example resolution that we used in our presentation, uh, the two sides are that some students uh, will support uh, the use of 
computer games and the other group of students will, uh, will speak about um, mind sports and will try to prove that they are more stu suitable for NIS students. So this is basically the structure of a debate round. In addition, there is cross-examination, which uh, can be used after the game or during the game. If your students are experienced enough, use it during the game, uh, after one of the speeches. If your students are less able, then keep it till the end and give them some time to formulate their question. And finally, the most important stage, one of the most important stages is the preparation. Give your students some time to come up with their arguments, discuss them in a team, uh, and prepare to support them and explain. Uh, so this is how we plan um, our formative assessment of speaking skills. First, we, uh, we begin with the learning objectives. Uh, we identify the keywords, then we try to visualize, and only then we proceed to criteria uh, and object, uh, sorry, and activities. The next solution that we would like to suggest is to scaffold the achievement of learning objectives. This seems quite obvious, but very often uh, students cannot achieve an objective because of um, language problems and psychological problems and we think it's very important to scaffold um, and help students achieve the objectives by providing them with vocabulary and grammar structures to use in their speaking. For example, in this debate round discussing the resolution about mind sports and computer games, we think it's important to use uh, the passive voice correctly and we would like to suggest an activity for the students to review the passive voice. Um, Everybody knows the game of tic-tac-toe and the teacher can ask students how is tic-tac-toe played and elicit the answer uh, in the same tense and in the same voice. And uh, a teacher can keep asking this question, how is tic-tac-toe played, how is it played, how is it done, until a student gives a correct sentence in the passive voice. Uh, and after that, of course, the attention of students can be drawn to the grammar, uh, an exercise may be done, but if the students are able enough, then this, this will be enough to remind them of the passive voice. Another activity that may be very useful to review the passive voice and also to uh, remind students of some uh, vocabulary items that can be used in a debate round is the game where students are divided into two teams and asked to make a list of things that the games, the given games, have in common. For example, what do chess and checkers have in common? What do bingo and scrabble have in common? What do mafia and debate have in common? Uh, but when they start listing uh, their features, it's important for them to use the passive voice uh, correctly, and this can be emphasized by the teacher and the teacher and the students will get a point only if they use the passive voice correctly. Uh, so this activity allows students to review the passive voice and at the same time it will give them some uh, vocabulary scaffolding uh, because they will be able to use the same vocabulary while debating. Uh, so this is how we believe uh, we should try and scaffold um, the achievement by our students of the learning objectives. Because, um, let me emphasize this, very often the achievement of objectives depends on the language that the students know and can use. Uh, what do these two games have in common? Group one, please. Um, maybe these games are played by two people. Two players. A, thank you. Group two. What do these two games have in common? Uh, both these games are played in using a uh, board. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Group three, what do these games have in common? Uh, these games, I think that they are played by squares. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a square board. Yes. Okay, is there anything to add? Do they have anything else in common? Mm. Um, this, uh, this game is required your logic and strategy. Okay. Yes. And thinking skills. So. Okay. In this game, use a brain. Brain. Brain is used. 
years of dream. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> the next solution um, that we believe is very important is to discuss the learning objectives and strategies to achieve them with the students. If we do this, if we elicit um, the criteria and the strategies to achieve them from students, they will be more meaningful for them than if they are just given by the teacher and demonstrated on a whiteboard. Uh, for example, before the debate round that you have just seen, uh, we discussed and students came up with the following criteria. They suggested that if we have a debate round, it's important to have proper argumentation. Um, they also, I was able to elicit from them the structure of an argument. They were quite good at it. Uh, many students mentioned language in different uh, forms. Some students said grammar, others said vocabulary, um, linking devices and so on. And we generalized it by using the word language. And also very many, uh, many quite many students said that cohesion is important. Uh, that when you debate you should have a structure in your speech, that you should uh, link your um, link the parts of your speech together by using appropriate cohesive devices. So basically the students came up with the most important criteria themselves. And I strongly believe that as a result of such discussion, uh, students, these criteria will be meaningful for the students. They will remember them and they will achieve the objective uh, more effectively. Uh, and also it will be easier to give feedback for students because uh, after the debate round, they will be able to refer to the criteria suggested by themselves and they will be able to assess themselves and, their, uh, and the other students in the class. So let me emphasize again that uh, it's very important to discuss uh, learning objectives and strategies to achieve them with the students. Okay guys, let's look back at this criteria that we set, uh, have set in the beginning. Uh, what about the language? Did the teams use appropriate language? Yes. Why yes? Why not? Because <laughs> it was used by specific voice. Okay. And they use it correctly. Um, uh, there were not always, but try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does anyone remember any mistakes? Um, yes, there was some grammar mistakes, but it's not so big uh, problem. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, uh, it's okay. okay. So we could still understand each other? Yes. yes. Uh, it's understandable. Okay. Later on I'll give you individual feedback on each mistake. How about the vocabulary? Was it like academic enough, low frequency? No. Not so super academic. Uh, but, but it's still enough. Enough. Yeah. It was simple that we understand. Yes. So I think that the vocabulary was quite simple and you could have used more academic words that you know. Yeah, but next time you think about it. Mm -hmm. Because we prepared in a few minutes and it was really like need to speak your native speech. Uh -huh. Okay, but still keep thinking about academic vocabulary, low frequency vocabulary. Try to use it in your speech. Okay? Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. uh, your arguments and supports? Did you all follow the structure? Yes, yes. They all follow the structure of arguments, they uh, present their central claim and the reasonings uh, which support their claim. Okay. How about persuasive language? Did they use the yeah. items? Did they use the Yes. Mm -hmm. Not all. But not all. And yeah. those who didn't use, think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So overall. Uh, what recommendations can we give for the future if we play this game again? Mm -hmm. How should we play it? Learn more academic words. Okay. Quite organize your speech. Yes, try to have some own structure. Give a lot of time to speak. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll think about it. I'll give more time. Anything else? The use of persuasive language. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also also try to control it. your grammar. Yes. yes. Yes, try to think about that. Also, to have explicit facts and evidence because we didn't heard uh, some, mm -hmm. no, some facts which, is, which was provided by the designers of the Okay. 
The next solution that we would like to suggest is to group the learning objectives and I would like you to watch a video where students do the cross-examination and this demonstrates how, for example, asking and answering questions uh, can be uh, integrated into the debate round. So, let's watch the video. Questions? Yes, I have. Okay, to which team? Uh, second team. Uh, are there any advantages uh, rather than uh, communication in playing computer games? Uh, yes, of course, uh, computer games uh, have to uh, develop our outlook. For example, uh, games uh, which called uh, civilization, with uh, help of civilization, we can learn uh, language, for example, English, uh, and uh, we can learn some capital of uh, country. Uh, it is uh, useful for us. Okay. So in the video you've just seen how students are ask, asking and answering questions uh, related to the debate round. Uh, because this group is, uh, has difficulties with questions, I postponed uh, the cross-examination till the end of the debate round. But if the group is more able, you can do it uh, in the course of the game. They can stop each other and ask uh, the questions. And this is, example, this is an example of how we can integrate um, and group different learning objectives. For example, uh, we can. Uh, the main objective of the debate round was to explain and justify a point of view, and at the same time, uh, the students achieved, and the teacher could have um, could assess um, the objective to be able to ask and respond to questions. Uh, this saves time and um, allows to achieve and assess uh, speaking objectives more effectively. Another solution that we believe uh, to be very important is to provide instructive feedback. And there are two, uh, two sides of um, this solution. First of all, the feedback should be given uh, based on the criteria. And again, if you have elicited the criteria from the students and they are meaningful for them, you can uh, rely on student self-assessment to a great extent. Uh, students will, in most cases, students will be able to achieve themselves and their peers and you can, again, elicit this um, assessment from them or you can uh, have written feedback, self-assessment or peer assessment against the criteria that have been set before the activity. Another important, um, uh, another important type of feedback is the language feedback, which can be immediate and delayed. And because this activity is mainly aimed at um, not at uh, language, but at the fluency of speaking, uh, I think that delayed, uh, delayed feedback would be a good solution. So uh, while listening to your students, a, a teacher can make notes on mistakes, then a, student, uh, a teacher can identify the most common mistakes that most of the students make, and then write them on the board and ask students to correct them or to uh, find out what the problem is and if they can, they will correct it. This is how uh, the language will be improved and this, uh, this is related to the other solution that we have suggested, which is to scaffold the achievement of learning objectives by students. Uh, you can, uh, when you do this delayed uh, feedback or delayed error correction, you can uh, relate this to the previous activity that you have done and remind uh, the students that you have reviewed the passive voice and ask them to give examples of, for example, incorrect use of passive voice by uh, the other people on the group. So uh, we strongly believe that instructive feedback on the achievement of the success criteria and on the language itself is very important for the students to improve and this is what makes our assessment uh, truly formative. Okay guys, let's look back at this criteria that we set, uh, have set at the beginning. Uh, what about the language? Did the teams use appropriate language? Yes. Why yes? Why, yes? Why not? The first one was use passive voice. Okay. And did they use it correctly? Uh, there was not always 
but try. <laughs> Does anyone remember any mistakes? Um, yes, there was some grammar mistakes, but it's not so big uh, problem. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, uh, it's okay. okay. <laughs> so we could still understand each other? Yes, yes. Uh, it's understandable. Okay. Later on, I'll give you individual feedback on each mistake. How about the vocabulary? Was it like academic enough, low frequency? No, not so super pretty. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's still enough. Enough. Yeah. It was simple, as we have said. Yes. So I think that the vocabulary was quite simple, and you could have used more academic words that you know. Yeah, but next time, you think about it. Mm -hmm. Because we prepared in a few minutes, and it was really like nature speaker, nature, nature, nature. 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 Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, but still keep thinking about academic vocabulary, low frequency vocabulary. Try to use it in your speech. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. uh, your arguments and supports? Did you all follow the structure? Yes. yes. They all follow the structure of arguments. They uh, present their central claim and the reasonings uh, which support their claim. Okay. How about persuasive language? Did they use any uh, items? Did they use other yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not all. But not all. And yeah. those who didn't use, think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So overall, uh, what recommendations can we give for the future if we play this game again? How should we play it? Learn more academic words. Okay. Quite organize your speech. Yes, try to focus on the structure. Give a lot of time to speak. Uh-huh, okay, I'll think about it. I'll give more time. Anything else? The use of persuasive language. Mm-hmm, okay. And also, also try to control it. your grammar. Yes, yes. Yes, try to think about that. Also, to have explicit facts and evidence because we didn't uh, heard some facts. No, heard some facts which, is, which was provided by the designers. So today we have um, we have looked at um, several points. The first one was the specific character of the formative assessment of students' speaking skills, and let me remind you that uh, assessment of speaking is special because uh, it is very difficult to quantify. It is uh, very often subjective and uh, because there are other factors, not only speaking itself, but there are other factors that assess the achievement by students of, um, of the success criteria. Then we looked at uh, some issues that arise out of the specific character of speaking. I've just uh, listed these issues. And we have suggested ways uh, to solve these issues. Uh, these ways are to start our planning with the learning objectives, to identify the keywords in the learning objectives, to visualize the result that we expect and only then proceed to the uh, success criteria. We have suggested uh, uh, a template of a lesson plan which will help you to uh, proceed in this way. Uh, another solution that we have suggested is to, is to scaffold the achievement of learning objectives, to provide students with appropriate grammar and vocabulary to use in their speaking. Uh, the next solution that we have suggested is to discuss the learning objectives and strategies to achieve them with the students, to make them meaningful for the students. Uh, another solution is to group learning objectives and be more cost-effective uh, in terms of time and resources. Uh, the next and the last uh, solution that we have suggested is to provide instructive feedback, which uh, can be related to the success criteria and at the same, t same time to the language issues that the students may have. Uh, so basically that is it. The most important thing is to remember the suggested solutions and use them in daily practices. Here are the references that we used preparing for this seminar. And it is, I would like to note that you can find all the materials of, and the video of this online seminar at moodle.nis.edu.kz. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you're welcome.